Let us pray. Good and gracious God, silence within us any voice but your own, that we as your children might hear you calling out to us from beyond the ages, speaking words of hope, words of love, and words of comfort. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Our scripture reading for this morning comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 15, verses 1 through 12, which can be found in your pew Bibles on page 1100, if you would like to follow along. The vine and the branches. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not remain in me, he is like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be given you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you obey my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have obeyed my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Almighty God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So you've already gotten a bit of a taste of what we've done this past week at Vacation Bible School. And uh, I don't know if you noticed it from the pictures, but you certainly have heard it from me and, and seen it from Jackie. We had a good time. And the kids did too, uh, outside playing and um, doing crafts and singing and discussing and, oh, eating snacks. Uh, we had a great time. It was fun. You could see the kids were thoroughly enjoying themselves. But this was fun with a purpose. And the purpose was not only to show them that church can be a fun place to be, but it was also to share with them what it is that makes church fun. What makes church special? What makes church different? 
from other places to have fun and to gather with each other. So the big overarching question that we were asking this week is, who is God and what is God like? Because when it comes down to it, when you boil away all the things that we do and the fun that we have, when you look at what makes the church different from other organizations, it's God. That's the big difference. And he is the one who draws us here into community together. So who is God and what is he like? Well, we didn't didn't hold back. We jumped right in with deep theology and we started talking about the Trinity. Now, we didn't jump in with the really hard stuff, but we kept it at Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. What is the Father like? What does it mean for God to be our Father? For some of us, this is an easy image to understand because when we think of Father, we might think of our own Father and we may have had a loving and caring and nurturing relationship with that Father. For others of us, maybe our relationship with our earthly father was not good. And it becomes a difficulty for us to understand God as our father. And so we did what Jesus does. We told a story, the story of the prodigal son. And we all have heard the story. I've stood up here and preached it at least once or twice uh, in the few years I've been here. The prodigal son, he asks for his inheritance, he wastes it all, he comes home prepared with this big long speech about how he's no longer worthy to be called a son. And what does the father do? He runs to welcome him, to greet him. He doesn't even have time to listen to the son's forgiveness request. He interrupts it with plans for a great big party. This, Jesus is saying, is what God is like. He is a father who welcomes us no matter what. And it doesn't matter whether you're in first grade or 80th grade. We all need to hear that message. That God loves us as a father, just the way we are. Our memory verse for the first day was 1 John 3, 1. See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we would be called children of God. And that is what we are. Who is God and what is he like? Father and Son. And we talked about the Son, Jesus Christ, as a good shepherd. Maybe you can help me with this. What does a shepherd do for their sheep? Anyone? Protects them, exactly. What else? Leads them, yeah. Anything else? Heals them, exactly. When they are wounded, the shepherd tends to their wounds. Yes, absolutely. Goes off and looks for the lost one. Ha, (laughs) shears them. Yeah. (laughs) Maybe we all need a haircut once in a while. (laughs) Yeah, talks to them, knows them by name. Yeah. This same imagery, Jesus is saying, applies to him. He protects us. He loves us. He knows us by name. These kids, they've heard this before. Most of them go to church at one or the other church in town. They've heard this before. But I wanted to make sure that they heard it again, that Jesus loves them just the way they are right now, right here. 
God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. This was the fun one because it's kind of hard to explain the Spirit. What does the Spirit look like? What does the Spirit sound like? What does the Spirit feel like? Difficult questions to answer. When it came down to it, about all we could say was, well, you can't see the Spirit. You maybe sometimes kind of hear the Spirit in your heart or in your mind, but you see the work that the Spirit does. And Jackie brought a wonderful video of the beautiful pine trees that are just blowing in the wind. And the Spirit is much like the wind. You can hear it. You can see what it's doing. But we don't have any control over it. And the Spirit is moving and working in those children. And I saw it. And I heard it. I didn't personally hear this, but one person, one volunteer shared with me that they were concerned because their dad no longer believed in God. These kids... They hear, they listen, and they worry. And yet the Spirit was working in that child. And you better believe that that child is praying for their parent. So the the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we got into some pretty heady theology, and they're all going along because they have heard this before. They know the message, but how does it all fit together? Jesus said, I am the vine, and you are the branches. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to take your branches... And I want you to, if you're not too bothered by the person sitting next to you, hold branches with each other. Lift your branches up. You are all connected to God. And you are all connected to each other. You can put your branches down. This is what it means to be the body of Christ together, is that we are all a part of the same vine, and Jesus, God himself, is the vine. He is the source of life. It is through him that our souls are nourished. And it is by being connected to him that we bear fruit in our lives. And it is by being connected to each other that we bear the best fruit. Now, what does that look like? Our memory verse for the last day was Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 through 23, which you'll see some of it uh, behind me on the beautiful banners. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, Peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. I want you to just imagine how our lives would be different if these fruit were being born again and again, every day, again and again. What if when someone walks by and, and sees you, they say, wow, there goes joy and peace and kindness. Do you think their life might be different? Might be changed, might be impacted just from a simple interaction? Maybe in the grocery store line? Absolutely. Sometimes all it takes is just a little bit of kindness 
to turn around someone's day. No, we didn't have to tell the kids, even the youngest kids, what patience was or self-control. They know these things. They struggle with these things. And so do we. It's hard. In fact, I would venture to say that, well, quite frankly, the more we try, the harder it is. Has anyone noticed that? Especially about patience. That's a good one. Have you ever noticed that when you are impatient, trying to be patient doesn't work? How about joy? When you are feeling in the dumps, manufactured joy just doesn't do it. Gentleness. When we want to scream and yell and throw a temper tantrum, just like a toddler, you know there's times you want to do it. It's hard to be gentle. And Jesus is telling us very clearly, we don't have to do it ourselves. The key to all of these fruits, the key to all of the good things in life that God has promised, the joy that he has promised. Remember, he said, I I say this to you, that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. The purpose of all of this lesson is to remind us to stay connected to God. Because when we are connected to the vine, and Jesus and his love is flowing through us, then fruit abounds. The kids got it. And they're living it. I saw it in them. Here's the difficulty for us. Don't grow up. (laughs) Did you get that? It is to such as these that the kingdom of heaven belongs. If you want to enter God's kingdom, you must be like a child. full of trust, full of hope, and ready to have fun once in a while. Thanks be to God. Amen. Would you please stand as you are able for our affirmation of faith, which comes to us from the brief statement of faith, which is part of uh, our book of confessions in the Presbyterian Church. In life and in death, we belong to God. Through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, we trust in the one triune God, the Holy One of Israel, whom alone we worship and serve. We trust in Jesus Christ, fully human, fully God. Jesus proclaimed the reign of God, preaching good news to the poor and release to the captives teaching by word and deed and blessing the children, healing the sick and binding up the brokenhearted, eating with outcasts, forgiving sinners, and calling all to repent and believe the gospel. Amen. Don't grow up. Go out and have fun. Live a life of joy, because this is God's intent 
for us, that we might bear fruit in our lives, love, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, and self-control. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of God's Holy Spirit abide with all of us today, tomorrow, and forevermore. And all God's children said...